a specific painting or a specific piece of art, you could argue you probably wouldn't go running into a burning building to save, even if it was the Mona Lisa, if it meant you were probably going to die doing it. Uh, but, but that's not what this is about. What this is about is when Hitler did this, and I've seen it happen in other places in the Sudan, um, it's not just about destroying the people themselves and killing the people, it's about destroying their culture and their history. So if it meant saving the culture of, uh, a, of your generation of people, that's a very different reason to try and save something and well worth risking your life for. Um, because you're, it's your history and your culture is what, it is the timeline of our lives and it is what we, how we can look at certain times in history and understand where we were as human beings. And so it's, it, it's all we have. So if you take that away, you're, you're, you're losing our, we're losing our identity. So I think that's the reason. It's, it's, it's not just about sort of a specific piece of art. It's about the idea of, of the culture and destroying it. Well, it was also the first war where we, as the first war where anyone ever uh, didn't keep the spoils. It's the first war ever. Uh, you know, this was the one where we actually gave it back. Um, and that's a, an incredibly honorable thing. It's also a very smart thing to do when you realize, when you see what happens to these cultures when you don't. Um, it, it, it's an, it was an incredibly useful tool in uh, sort of bridging the gaps uh, along the way of, of, of reconstruction yeah. as well. So it's a, you know, again, it's sort of like, you know, if you had an American flag, it's, you know, I have one that was my, it was over the coffin of my Uncle George and it's folded in a triangle and I wouldn't run into the house to get it if, you know, if it was on fire and I, it meant certain death. But if you're standing there and a couple of neo-Nazis are stomping on the flag and you know it could also mean certain death, you might go in and do something about that. You know, it's, it's about... You know, it, it's really about the idea that these pieces stand for something more than, than themselves. Grant read the book. I think he got it at the airport. It wasn't one of those things where the studio comes in and says, hey, we got a book. And we were trying to do a film, because Grant and I have been doing films for a long time. We've worked, been working together for 30 years. And most of the stuff we do is pretty cynical and pretty, we think it's funny, but we're not really very cynical people. We're actually pretty happy, normal people. And I said, you know, we keep doing these movies, you know, The Ides of March and films that are really fairly dark. And I said, we're the least dark people I know. And I said, we should do one sort of film where the good guys win and you know, we should do one of those. And we started looking at old John Sturgis films like The Great Escape and things like that when we started to do this film. And we thought, wait, let's do, let's do it, let's do this kind of a film. And it's also nice because, you know, to do a World War II film, it's very hard to do one with an original story because we know them all by now. And so the fun part for this was that most people don't know the story of truly the greatest art heist in the history of the world, by far. Well, we wrote all the parts for all the guys. Um, except for Bob Balaban, we didn't know who we were going to write that part for. We ran into Bob at a party, and I looked at Grant, and I was like, that's the guy that Bill Murray should be giving a hard time to. Uh, but the rest of them, we wrote it for him, and we sent him to him. Bill's a good friend. He's staying in my house right now, actually. Um, and uh, John Goodman and I worked together back on Roseanne, even. Uh, and we worked together on Argo, and on Argo, we ca called him up and said, we were working on a project. We'd love you to... To, to take a look at. Uh, Jean de Jordan I'd gotten to know over the, over the year of Descendants and the Artist. And, uh, and uh, so all these guys were basically friends of mine. And we called them up and said, and Kate, I, we'd worked together and we're good friends. And I asked them if they would like to come play for a few months. And they all said yes. These men didn't have to do this. They had already fought in the First World War. They were past their prime. And they did it because they felt that the loss of culture was so much more important that they risked their lives and go. They didn't have to do it. 